So this is the sort of baseline intensity. Uh, this intensity I naught is the it to this intensity. That's uh, what intensity you would have with a single slit and nothing else. Good. Now, if I add uh, the second slit, um, what do you think will happen to the intensity here? I mean, you know the general features, right? You're going to start to see seeing interference pattern. You are going to see places where the intensity actually goes to zero. So let me just mark those places so that we are going to talk about the later. So there's going, there are going to be some places where um, you get, um, there are going to be some places where you get destructive interference with two slits. So their intensity will be zero, we'll work that out. Now, how do you think your maximum intensity will change? Do I know? Um, I'm, I'm asking everyone. Um, do you think, so, do you think it'll top, I mean, it'll be greater than intensity, for the maximum intensity, it'll be greater than intensity with a single slit, right? So how much greater? Greater by factor of two or some other factor? Two is an easy guess. Um, so how do you think, so let's just explore that a little bit because two is a common guess. And that's the guess that makes sense to a lot of people because that reminds you of uh, what I did last time. You know, if you have a baseball constructive, well, sorry, tennis ball, if you have a tennis ball, constructive interference is like adding a second tennis ball, so you have two tennis balls. Truth is that's a simplistic description that's kind of wrong. <laughs> So let's say your initial guess was this. Um, you have, um, so let's say this is the place where it's a two I naught, and then pattern that you are imagining would look something like this, right? Let me tell you in two ways how you can guess that this pattern that we are drawing is actually not quite right. So you have to imagine, you know, tilting your head and looking at this graph. Um, when you average I naught over this space, it's just I naught, right? It's a constant function. When you average this uh, double slit pattern, what does the average roughly look like? Again, I naught. Now, is that what you would have expected? You have some total amount of energy going through one slit. When you have second slit open, how much total energy do you expect going through the both the slits together? Double the energy, right? <laughs> Double the energy, that's the intuitive thing. Energy is conserved. So that's what you should expect. When you have two slits open, so there's a double the amount of light waves coming in, you should have double the total amount of energy here. And with this two I naught, that doesn't work. So why should this value, this value be so that the total energy is conserved. Four I naught. It's not intuitive. Um, so f with the four I naught, it would look like this. Um, I, I don't know. This picture doesn't really mean anything. But when you have this, now this is a pattern that will average down to two I naught when you average it over space. And that would be the double the total power going through one slit and that agrees with our intuition about energy conservation and all that. Let me give you the second way of seeing why this uh, maximum intensity, so max intensity, should be four I naught instead of two I naught. Um, you might have noticed my switch over in language from the first hour of today and the second hour. Here, I was talking about electric field. At some point, I switched it over to intensity. Electric field is not the same thing as intensity. Can intensity be negative? No, I mean, you know, there's no such thing as energy, uh, negative, I don't know, negative kinetic energy. Uh, can electric field be negative? Yeah. yeah, if one direction is positive, then the other direction is negative. 
So, I mean, you can see it here. This can be negative. <laughs> so electric field can be negative. Um, intensity is not. And I guess this is the relationship I have to give you. Um, if we had more time in physics 4B, we would have covered this in physics 4B. We didn't. You can look at it in the textbook. There is a relationship between the intensity and electric field. And I will just write down this much. Intensity of light, of light is proportional to electric field. Uh, squared. So uh, by using this language of proportional to, I'm hiding a bunch of numerical constant factors that I frankly don't remember. <laughs> but what is important is the way you get intensity is by uh, squaring the electric field. And this uh, relationship is actually pretty robust. You can, um, this can be intensity as a function of time. And that would be the electric field as a function of time squared. Not that it matters because we end up averaging over anyway. But that's actually important because um, if you average this over time, what do you get when you average electric field over time? You get zero, but that doesn't mean zero intensity because when you look for average intensity, you first square this before you do any kind of averaging. Yeah? So this is one um, relationship that will help you understand this. So, um, so we talked about superposition principle, right? Superposition principle, it holds for electric field. It holds for what we were talking about in the first hour of class. It does not hold for intensity. I mean, you know, imagine this. Intensity due to one solid is this flat line. Intensity due to the other slit is another flat line. If there was a superposition principle for intensity, your total intensity would be simply this flat line shifted over. But that's not the case. It doesn't hold. And th this is really the reason why it doesn't hold. It's because of this square. The electric field obeys linearity property. Intensity doesn't because you are squaring things. So, on this screen, what you want to describe is the, um, so if you were trying to say what the total intensity is, and if you, say, if you were trying to say that uh, intensity due to one solid plus intensity due to the other solid, that would be wrong. That's not right. Instead, what you can do is you can say the total electric field is equal to electric field due to one slit number one as a function of, I guess, position and time, plus electric field due to slit number two. Once again, as a function of position and time. So this is true. That's the superposition principle. And so what do you do when you want to get the total intensity? Yeah, you take this and you square it. And the total intensity is at least the proportional to that. So let me just write that out uh, quickly so that you can kind of see where all this comes from. So the total intensity would be uh, proportional to the total electric field squared, or let me just write that out. It's a, you know, this whole thing squared. So I'm going to get three terms, E1 squared, E1 squared plus E2 squared. Um, and, and I actually recognize these first two, two terms. These two terms I can recognize as this is what leads to intensity due to one slit number one. Right? So it's actually going to be a constant value. This is what leads to intensity due to slit number two. So that's also going to lead to constant value. Both of these are equal to each individual equal to I naught. So if all you had was this, then you would have you know, two I naught, constant value. But it's not that, because you have the cross terms. You have E1 times E2 plus E2 times E1. Or you have this, plus two times E1 as a function of position and time times E2. 
as a function of position and time. And this is the interference term. This is what leads to that interesting pattern of intensity. At some places, this will be as large as plus 2 i naught. That's where you get 4 i naught. In some other places, this will be as small as minus uh, 2 i naught. So, it'll, um, so this leads to a range of values uh, from uh, minus 2 i naught to plus 2 i naught. So this is where you get destructive interference. This is where you get constructive interference. 